<laughs> if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I want to go to uh, verse 23, and, uh, and while you're getting there, you know, we've been covering on sanctification, and so... Uh, set apart there's instant sanctification there's progressive sanctification which is that spiritual growth now I've, I've got you know the book like I said Jim Junkins had turned me on to it but I ended up getting the whole series and it's called the complete green letters and then it was used of course there in Bible college but your first one is the principles of spiritual growth. And, of course, you know, with that is simply faith is like the first chapter and then time. And the time is, you know, that progressive sanctification. And he covers Miles J. Stanford. And he's quoting a lot of people, R.A. Torrey, a bunch of other people like that, in, you know, in this book. It's a very good book. And, of course, then you get into chapter 6 of Romans, reckoning, you know, and knowing and reckoning and yielding and, and uh, obeying and yielding and uh, talking about the principles of spiritual growth. So growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So it's a, if you do get a chance, uh, you know, that would be a very good book. It, don't, it doesn't matter if you've been walking the Lord for a year. It doesn't matter if 35 or 40. It's a very good book. And uh, Miles J. Stanford. And uh, it's a very good book. And, you know, I, I, it's the kind of book that you when you read it, you know, and you go back and read it again, you learn something else. It just... You know, the Lord shows you something else in, as you're growing. But, you know, he, he covers a lot of things. Like I said, I taught it, you know, there at Bible College, you know, some years back. But, uh, like I said, Jim Junkins the one that turned me on to it and, uh, years back as well. So I'd already read it, but uh, you can get, it's only like about eight, nine, eight, 98, something like that, just for the single one. I think it's like 10 or 12. But I just I got it down in Gullions because you know with uh, Greg and you know those books a lot of my books are still down there at Greg's and probably some other things too. So uh, anyway, I believe that's going to materialize, manifest itself, and things will be worked out. <clears throat> but I'm going to read this. Of course, you know our Ephesians 5:26. You know it, where it says you know. Uh, sanctify them through thy, you know, you know, through the, you know, of course, I mean, John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy word, thy word is truth. And, of course, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present unto himself, you know, a church, a bride, without, you know, spot, wrinkle, wrinkle or blemish. And so uh, it's, you cannot emphasize enough about you know a clean vessel now of course i know we all sin but the thing about the you know that book and of course you know the doctrine of romans chapter 6 of sanctification i am crucified with christ galatians 2 20 i'm dead i'm to reckon myself count it so and and you may have to learn all them verses of scripture and whenever sin comes hey just as jim said you know Jim Junkins dropped dead, and the devil can't mess with the dead man. Okay? So these uh, uh, passages of, of, of Scripture, that, you know, uh, that, he might, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. Now, when I get into something here, I'm going to cover something you don't hear a whole lot of teaching or preaching about, which is about sanctification. And we'll let us read First Thessalonians. Now, it sounds like I'm going to be going in and out here. Okay. All right, 23. 
Five, chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Now we know what W-H-O-L-L-Y means, completely. And then when you get into completely, then we're talking about ultimate sanctification where the Lord delivers us from the presence of sin when he says, come up hither. In a moment, we're out here and we get a new body. Now, <clears throat> I can remember a few weeks back of pre preaching on transfiguration. One thing I did not say was in Isaiah 52, now, and what the Lord's bringing back to me about that was his visage was so more and more than any man. In the Hebrew, it simply means that he did him look human. You couldn't even recognize him. Okay? But they sure recognize him when he was resurrected. So you see transfiguration, transforming. And that's what's going to happen to us too. Whether it's by, you know, the clouds or the clouds, as some have said, you know, there's going to be people who actually uh, are saved and something happened to them that was mangled up too bad. It could have been a fire. It could have been anything. But you can rest assured you will know them. Amen. And just as our, our Savior, same way. Now it says wholly, completely. So it goes, and notice what it goes on to say. Completely what? It says, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of of our Lord Jesus Christ, not without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Amen. And we are complete in Him, and being confident of this very thing, He which hath begun a good work in you, for we are His workmanship, right? Ephesians 2, right, and 10. Being confident of this very thing, this is an assurance that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 1 6. Abraham, being fully persuaded that he was able to perform that which he has promised. Amen. We're going to get a body like him. Amen. And that's a promise. <laughs> a bodily resurrection, he comes back, bodily return, and we get a new body. Well, why not? Because we're going to have a new heaven, a new earth. You don't want to be on this old cursed because creation, even the earth is crying out for the redemption of the body. Amen. But that redemption of the body in Ephesians is talking about the church. But, earth, you know, the earth is groaning too. Because it was cursed. Amen. Now, something, something I've been, you know, not talking about my wife in a bad way, but one of the things some people included, my wife's included in, is that our emotions were cursed too? Because I'm that's going to set up what I'm about to I'm about to talk about. Okay. Now I'm going to use the skeleton of Clarence Larkin, just so you can see it. Okay, because it says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder sunder of soul, spirit, and joints of the marrow. So now I'm saying what spirit, soul, and body, but he lists soul. Spirit and joints of the mirror. Why? Because we're still here. Right? Now, <clears throat> one of the things is this right here. So was our emotions cursed too. That old man. And you're going to see this right here in a second. And I wish that Lynn could have heard it because I done told her. I said, you're fixing the, I'm going to pull scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture, Hebrew and Greek and everything. And I'm going to show you what I've been saying for the last two years. Now, one of the things, and I know the pastor, you know, he's had subjects that he has studied and studied on the same subject and just can't get enough of it. I know that. My, I love studying on the tabernacle. I'm not far from finishing up the book that the Lord's allowed me to write. Now, the thing is, <clears throat> he said spirit, soul, and body. 
All right. What did it say? I think Genesis 2, 7. And he said he made man from the dust of the earth. Now, medically, it's been proven that you got that we, as far as known to man in the medical, or even, you know, as far as uh, the chemical makeup, 89 minerals in our body. I can remember before they started, you know, the, you know, social services or the doctors when you, the, they're pregnant, you know, uh, the one, the you know, the child or she's with child. What they put them on all these vitamins and everything, and give them all that because the baby is taking up all the minerals in, in the body, depleting it. Well, years and years ago, and of course I can say this now, but Diane's sister Inga, when she was pregnant with little John, who's a grown man now, she craved dirt and went out there literally eat the dirt because. Why? And God made well, Adam from the dust of the earth. And to the back to the dust of the earth, you'll return. Because this old body is not going, it will not, 1 Corinthians 15, it cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's why he crucified, we are crucified with Christ. Amen? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin to live any longer therein? Why? Because we're crucified with him. We're planted together with him. That means union. Amen. We're one. That's right. Amen. Planted together. Right. Raising his likeness. Amen. Romans chapter 6, right? Now, I'll try not, and, and Miss Dare, you know, she's trying to try to keep up with the scriptures and stuff. And the time I got done with this, adding two, then I still ain't got all the pages there because I only took what I, and there is no way, no way I'm going to be able to go through these 24 pages. So I'm going to be led of the Lord, and he's going to have put me with what pages that y'all need because I don't know what you have need of. Amen. Now, spirit, soul, and body. Now, briefly, spirit. Now, I'm going to go first over to the Old Testament. And, and the Hebrew word is ruma. Ruma. R-U-W-A-C-H. Ruach, excuse me. Okay? Ruach. But that is the Holy Spirit. The word used there is che. Didn't need to be born again, Adam, did he? He was innocent. Adam and Eve were innocent. They hadn't sinned yet. When he created them, they were in innocence. Innocency is what they call it. Okay, that's che. So he breathed into from the dust of the ground. The clay is actually, actually what the Hebrew word, red-faced clay. Hey, North Carolina is nothing but red clay, isn't it? Amen. That, that's not saying that Adam was, you know, <laughs> made from North Carolina soil. Okay? <laughs> that's not saying that at all. But notice that it said red clay. That's dust of the earth. Amen. So that right there, now so he made from Adam, who is Adam, made from the dust of the earth. Okay? And so, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So now we see Che, the spirit man, and we see the body. Amen? And he become a living nephesh soul. Okay? Now, it took the meeting of the spirit and the body. Now, notice what James said. Faith without works is dead. He said, as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. So, as I kept studying, studying over the years about spirit, soul, and body, I wanted to understand. Because there were some things that I went through, and I just don't talk about it much, and I have on a couple of occasions. But, it brought me to the place of studying about the spirit, soul, and body. Now, in 2013, I'm taking care of a parsonage and, and eventually two churches was taking care of that. 
And what happened was in my studying, fasting, and praying, and so forth, in my studying, the Lord, what, you know, the Holy Spirit who testifies and glorifies the Lord, Jesus, right? He brings me to the place of, look at the Lord. All right? He prepared, he said, that the Lord, the Father, prepared him a body. There's a body. Right? And the Word was made flesh. There's the body, incarnation of Christ. God incarnated, right? So now, here we got uh, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. There it is again. There's the body. He buried in, on, in his body our sins at the cross. There it is again. So he had a body. So when I started looking at it, you know, the Lord started, like I said, the Holy Ghost was showing me the Lord. Okay? Now what about a soul? He's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and after he says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became his great drops of blood falling to the ground. Right? But he looks at the disciples, and he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. There's a soul. Now he's got a body, our Lord does, and he's got a soul. Read, if you would, turn to Isaiah 53. <clears throat> and we'll read it. Here Israel has the gospel preached to them right here. Amen? They don't... The Jews don't believe in the New Testament, but they got it right here in Isaiah. <laughs> 66 chapters. They got all 66 books. Amen. So, reading, we'll look at, uh, let's look at uh, verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. Now, I would say grief would be an emotion. Would you not? Agony, grief, correct? When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, the word that was made flesh, the seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15, or until your child is born, until your son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. That hit that seed. Amen. The promised seed. Right? Everybody with me so far? So it says, He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul. There it is again. Nephesh. Same word. And Adam become a living soul. Which would explain when Paul is given the, the discourse of the resurrection. It's what we call in uh, hermeneutics, it's what they call first mention and then full mention, okay? So full mention is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He gets to talk about the first Adam, the first man, the first Adam, that which is born of the flesh, right? And I'll be getting into that too right here in a minute, Okay? But that, that last man, the last Adam, the second man, he's a quickening spirit. First Adam, it was what? A soul. A living soul. Right? Quickening spirit would say, John 3, 3 and 5, ye must be born again. Amen. A quickening spirit. Amen. And it's through the water and the spirit. Spirit, right? The water's the word, and the word is quick and powerful. Quick, alive, quickening, a living, a quickening. Okay? So, now, here we got the Lord. We know he's got a body. We know he's got a soul. Right? What about a spirit? Everybody's familiar with that. Into thy hands I commend my body, soul, spirit. 
who is a quickening spirit. Okay? Now, in creation we had we have let us, so he's triune. Everybody says Trinity. It's triune. Elohim. Anything that ends up with him in Hebrew is plural. Tri. And there it's one God, right? And then it says God. Now that's of course Genesis 1, 26, uh, 26 and 27 said, and God, singular. So that's Uno. Triune God. For there are three that bear record, heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Emmanuel, God with us. <laughs> Did I go too fast for you there, Mary? You kind of got <laughs> like, what is he talking about? Well, one thing I, I, I can say, the Lord knows what you have need of, and you're only going to receive, God's only going to reveal, show you what you need. Okay, I, I can get up here, I can talk all day long. I can get in-depth about a lot of things. But God's only going to give you what you need, okay, that you may grow in grace, okay? So that's okay. Don't worry about it. The seed's being planted. Seed's being watered. But God will give the increase. <laughs> okay, so... Just listen, receive, and it'll grow. It's unconscious growth. You know, I, you, you've heard me talk about, you know, I got in a bad condition. I was, when you say backslide, it's not an instant thing. I, I see a lot of that. Do, do, yeah, I'm sure the pastor, Miss Jean, that instant, there ain't no such thing as an instant backslide. Backslide, let's take the words and reverse it. Slide back. And it's a slow thing, and you don't realize it till hey, you're in a bad way. Now, how would I? Why would I say that that happened to Samson? Did it? What happened with Joseph and Mary? Mary, there was on a three day journey before they realized Jesus wasn't with them. Amen. And they went back to Jerusalem. He's in the temple. He's twelve. He said he was about being about his father's business. Amen. So don't worry about Mary. I'm planting. And the Lord will water it it's through the pastor when he, when he preaches Sunday morning. And I've been looking forward to this, by the way, for the pastor to be back up here. That's the answer to prayer. Amen. Now, I'm going to read some things right here. Let us now consider man's relation in the spirit world. Man is... In his physical and spirit makeup was made for two worlds. Amen. The physical and the spirit world. Those two worlds. Physical, you could say it temporal or spiritual. Okay? Earthy, heavenly. You with me? Okay. Okay. Writing to the Thess Thessalonians, Paul said, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray God, your whole spirit, and, and I've highlighted it. Spirit, soul, body, be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that the Lord Jesus Christ had a spirit, soul, and body. And it was undefiled. Blameless. Amen? I think it's... Uh, uh, Hebrews seven twenty nine. Okay, and separated, undefiled. Amen. So it goes on and says, writing to the Hebrews, he says, the word of God is quick, alive, and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. It cuts coming and going. Old Testament, New Testament, written word, living word. He is the Word, made flesh. The written Word becomes the living Word, and it goes on and says, powerful, it's the word dynamo. Boom, explosive, like dynamite. 
Okay, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, the body, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, a discerner. This um, it said, and is a discerner. The word of God, the word that I speak unto you, their spirit, their life. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. God breathed in, divinely breathed in. It dis is a discerner. Now let's go. Let's go to now the Greek here. Decisive, critical. For example, discriminative. Discern. A judge. Lord said, and a lot, a lot of people they get the world knows this one. Judge not, lest they be judged. Right. But Jesus said, but rather judge righteous judgment. He said it in Matthew 7, but he says over here, but rather righteous judgment. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. Now tell my eyes, be justified. And I say that my eyes overcome without judge. Okay? So it's a discerner. The word does judge. A lot of people, when they... I didn't say judge. It's not saying judge as in condemnation. Here you got, and I, I've been to court for myself a couple times. That's all. But for other people, it's sat there. Here we got a judge. He's got to make a judgment call. Guilty or not guilty. That's a judgment. That's a judgment. Let me say it this way. Right or wrong? It actually gets the word from an umpire. You're safe or you're out. You, you make a judgment call every day, all the time. Now wait a minute, you ain't supposed to make that decision. That's judging. Yeah, but I gotta go. I gotta go through this light here. I'm gonna get a ticket. Well, it says red, but you're telling me not. Don't pay no attention to it. No, judge not leave, lest he be judged now. You see how that's taken out of context. You understand? And he goes on and explains. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, explains that. And I get it. That, that would be another sermon in itself. But discern means to judge. So the Word does judge you. Okay? Going on. It means to distinguish or decide between mentally or judicially by implying to try it to condemn, to punish, to avenge, to conclude, uh, determine, go to suit at the law. And it simply means to sentence something. You go and say, for an example, I've used this illustration about judging. All right, I'm, you know, I hear I'm out running to an old friend. He said, you want to smoke a joint? And he sticks it in my face. I'm going to make a judgment call. Yes. Or no. That's actually called decision. That's called free will. That's what it's called. So now I've got to make a decision. All right? So now it says, but if we walk in the light, he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus Christ, his precious blood cleanses us from all sin. So now, walking in that light, if I know and God's given me the light on it, and I go against it, I made a bad judgment call. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> that's not good. You with me? Okay. So that's what discerner of the thoughts. Now, you remember when the Lord said in John chapter 3, after he said you must be born again, you know, he goes on, they will not come to the light. They'll not come to this word, will they? Because it will judge them. It will convict them. Right? So, because their deeds are evil. Because this light will shine on their sin. See, as we go along, it, uh, when it's, it said thoughts and intents of the heart. It means to, to deliberate. Now, I'm going to give you a, a 1828 def, definition. To weigh in the mind, to consider and examine the reasons for and against a measure, to a step, uh, estimate the weight or force of arguments, 
or the probable consequences of a measure. What is the consequences if I go against the Word of God? If I make the wrong decision and walk against that light that He's given me. Sin will take you further than you want to go. You've heard it, right? Take you further than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. Make you pay more than you want to pay. Right? What's the consequences? I think it fits. This is called cause and effect. If I took a rock and I threw that rock into a pond, it's going to set off ripples. Well, my sin ain't bothering nobody. Oh, yes, it is. It's affecting everybody around you. It's called cause and effect. By making a bad, not thinking about the consequence. Now, People's Bank used to have something when I was a kid. I used to like it. And uh, they had a stack of them. It was these frogs, Mary. Kind of cool. They're about this big. You can get you one. Of course, we always like to go because of suckers. We can, not, not me. Get a sucker. And suck them. Anyway, <laughs> it was a, this big old, you know, frog. And I guess it's some kind of advertising campaign. Or maybe it was for the young kids in Catawba. I don't know. Anyway, it said on it, look before you leap. That's a good way of putting it. Amen? You need to deliberate. <laughs> it said, uh, who's this going to affect? Well, first of all, it's going to affect me. And then it's going to affect everybody around me, too. So here we've got deliberate way, uh, another way, to balance, to balance in the mind. To weigh it out. Should I do this? Maybe I shouldn't do this. Do this? Maybe I shouldn't do this. That's what deliberate means. So it's a discerner of the thoughts. God telling you both sides. If you go against this, now this is what you've done. You, you now can confess it. Now we can step into 1 John 1, 9. Confess it, Right? If you don't, guess what's going to happen? God's going to show you. If you keep on doing that and you don't turn from it, this is the consequences of it. Okay, I believe, and and I, I've stumbled and fell, you know, over the years. Now, I see a lot of that too over the last, since 1989. Everybody put you up on that pedestal. I put my pants on just like any other man. I can and do and how. Now, you know, I've used the illustration about horn cussing. But I can go through a, a, other things. A bad thought go through your mind about somebody will say something. All of a sudden, it'll, it's what they call a trigger. It'll trigger something that happened 25 years ago. Boom! You, I can't believe this. You ever had that happen, Mary? Amen. Thank God for First John one nine. Instead of letting it go, confess it right then. Amen. I like how the pastor over the years said, "This is how I heard it from the pastor." Keep short sin accounts. It's that simple. Let's not make it hard. And after you went to the woodshed enough times, you'll say, hey, I'm going to do it the right way. I want to do it His way, the Lord's way, because I ain't got no way. I <laughs> say amen. Now, I've said that too. Amen. So weighing the facts and the argument, uh, come let us reason together. <laughs> That's another one. And I think that happens to be Isaiah 118. Now, the Lord's doing the talking now, and you've heard me say this. I've lost. Every, every debate that I've had with the Lord, I've lost. Should have just obeyed. And then once you obey, you went, man, I wish I'd have done that a long time ago. God, I cannot believe that. I didn't want to go to Africa. When I got there, it was a beautiful country, great people, and I'm going, man, I'm having a great time in the Lord. Amen. Why did I not do this two or three years before? And going to the woodshed. Amen. Like I said, I lost. And I went. Amen.
Now, I'm going to draw something on the board. This come from a 1919, and <laughs> it's not the best. If I could, if I, I used to draw a lot. You know, it was kind of, uh, kind of like uh, me playing music and all that. But I had won a bunch of scholarships and all that stuff. And I used to like to draw. If I sat down and, and I would take, you know, like, uh, I mean, one that I did and was make it big. They were only this big, but I was making it this big. And it looked just like what Walt, Walt Disney has. You couldn't tell any difference. So I, but you're not going to tell right here to me. <laughs> so what happened? Something went bad wrong here. All right, what he does is he uses this right here. Uses a circle now. So the thing about Clarence Larkin was this. He was an architect. And he, or an engineer, an architect, and so forth. And so he drawed a lot of graphs. And he was good. <laughs> okay? And so what he does, he says... The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the dividing, dividing, like a petition. You know what a petition is, right? Partition, excuse me. And he draws a circle, then another circle. Each one of these right here, as you see, is a partition. To the dividing asunder. Dividing. So this is the body. This is the soul. And this is the spirit. Now, this is amazing. Earth. We'll put it this way. This is the air, the water, and the land. How many earths you got? Here's the shell, here's the white, and there's the yolk. How many eggs you got? <laughs> Amen. I got this finger right here. How many joints you got? One, two, three. Put one finger. Yes, yeah, right. All right. Electricity. You got the wire. You got the electricity. Or you, you can actually say the bulb and the element and then the electricity going into it. But it's one bulb and it takes all three to make it work. Amen. There's three stages in growth. Baby, right? A child, baby, adolescent, and adult. Amen. I can go on and on. So this is this right here is an illustration he uses for this being a triune. So we're uh trichotomist. Is one way, a technical word, trichotomist or a tripart. We believe in a tripart man. Okay? So what he says, he says this right here, that you've got these gates. This here. There's one, two, three, four, and five. He calls them gates. I call them doors. And what happens is, you can give place to the devil. <laughs> you say, what? Yep. See, this one get this one door right here, open door right here, and we're going to call it seeing the five senses, hearing. And you can read in Proverbs chapter 4 and some of the Proverbs, and it tells you how to, you know, you need to protect your hearing and your heart and your eyes and so forth, right? Because if you'll think about it, that's what got King David in trouble, wasn't it? That's also seeing was exactly what got Eve in trouble too, didn't it? She looked upon the fruit. It was good for what? Mm. That's another one, taste. So I got seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling. Everybody with me so far? And here's touch. 
So these doors, that's why Paul said it's good that a man not touch a woman. Amen. Because this is the body. And these gates right in here is going to affect the soul. Arouses emotions that it's not supposed to be. Right? Because inside there, now I'm going to do it again. Here's five again. And like I said, you know, this ain't the best drawing, okay? But over here, we got imagination. That's not too good. I'm glad you can't see the eyes and nose and blah, 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 blah. But imagination, right? Amen. Here we got conscience, which happened to be quickened when Adam and Eve to eat of the knowledge of good and evil. So now they got the knowledge of what? Good and evil to make a judgment call now. <laughs> <laughs> the conscience. Now you can have a vile conscience, a seared conscience. I can go on with this one. Now, so we've got conscience. So I can be seeing something and it'll spark my imagination, couldn't it? So that pretty much lines up with it, doesn't it? <laughs> Amen. So here we got memory. Now, someone told me about two years ago they took the scripture casting down imagination. You don't need to remember all that stuff. I said, how are you going to forget it? Especially when you got photographic memory. <laughs> it don't work. I said, I think you took that out of context because it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself above the knowledge of God's Word. And bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. <laughs> right? Not cast down bad, or some somebody done to me, say, 30 years ago. Amen. I don't have to cast that down. I've been forgiven. If you truly forgive them and the Lord, you know, cleansed you of that sin, you don't have no problem with it. That don't mean I have to hang around with them and get around, you know, get around me. Because fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We've heard that one, right? So, memory. Now we got memory. Now we got will, which, you know, also could be, I'll go right here first, affections. That's a, your emotions, which we are to crucify the affections and lust thereof, I think. We walk by faith, not by feeling. Now, those sacred feelings, love, joy, peace, oh, yeah. Glory to God. But he said, be angry and sin not. Because that old flesh is still with us. For in my flesh dwelt no good thing. Right? And this right here is the free will or volition. Reasoning, if you will. I'll just put reasoning. Now that I got, got us to that point. So all this can get into the soul. Right? God made Adam from the dust of the earth. That's the body. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he become a living soul. So this is the spirit man. You can look at it this way. The body is world conscious. You know about the world, flesh, and the devil? The world, the flesh, wars without <coughs> coming at you. What about the war? What about the wars going on right here in the soul? Because Lot's soul, he vexed his rights of soul. Amen. So now we've got spirit, soul, and body. And this is how Adam operated. 
See, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he become a living soul. So a man that's, when they sinned, he died spiritually right then. 930 years later, his body died. It's the word. Therefore, he was not, God. he could not commune with him in the cool of the day anymore because he was spiritually dead. Amen. And then they were expulsed out of the garden. And it said the Lord made them coats of skin, shed blood. Now he could talk with them. His work began. Genesis 3.15. Even though in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 1, 2, and 3, I believe right through there, he rested on the seventh day and he looked and seen his work was good. He rested. Mary, he was not tired. He's omnipotent. Why did he rest? It means he was finished. He was done. <laughs> I can imagine someone young, you mean God gets tired? <laughs> no, I pray not. He's omnipotent. Amen. So you can say this is world conscious, this is man conscious, and this is God conscious. Because God is a spirit, isn't he? The Lord is that spirit, right? And no man has seen God at any time. He's holy. Pure light. I mean, there ain't no way. He'd die. So he came. God was in Christ. He came in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And God was in Christ, Paul said. Everybody with me so far? Now, real quick. If uh, I'm going to show this and I'm going to be done. Now, he said, sanctify, set apart. So he said, you remember, you remember I mentioned about circumcision? Remember that? There you go. Cut off the excess. Put off the old man. Put on the new. <laughs> Amen. Right? You got me? How do I do that? Now, God is a spirit. And so when I accepted Christ, I heard the gospel. And the only thing that keeps from the Holy Ghost coming into my spirit, man, is my will. Come, let us reason together. And we did. 1972. And I opened the door. The Holy Spirit came in. So the Holy Spirit, God is a spirit. God lives in my spirit, man. Now, I can now, at this point, through sanctification of the spirit, now at this point, everything, I can go back to when the first Adam, before he fell. He thought, this is how he functioned, spirit, soul, body. Okay? Then, when Adam fell, the spirit man, he died. So he was only functioning on the soul and in, in the flesh. So before somebody gets saved, they're a soulish person. Soulical. You with me? So once they get saved, it takes them a time, over a period of time, to distinguish, is it my soul or is it my, the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking to my spirit man? Some people, immediately, no problem. Some people, they have functioned over the years solically uh, with their imaginations and their conscience and, and so forth, fighting against it. Well, you know that's wrong, and you have that deliberation going on inside of you. Well, no, I don't like to do that. No, I ain't supposed to do that. That's deliberating with yourself. That argument, that's your conscience. And your reasoning. You even get to the point where you're accusing or excusing one another. Paul say that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. God's a God in love. He would never, no problem. Try it. Amen. Now, 
I'll let y'all look at this. That's the heavenly tabernacle. And then we're done. And I'll show you another one. That's the heavenly tabernacle. This is the one I want you to see. This is the three tabernacles. The heavenly tabernacle right here. The tabernacle in the wilderness. Did not Jesus, see the ta this tabernacle right here, is, of course the Hebrew said it was made according to pattern of this one, the heavenly one. So, yeah, amen, it's still there. And you see this one right here? It, the life expectancy of that temple or that tabernacle was 400 years. It's temporary. So Jesus said, destroy this temple, this tabernacle, destroy that, and I'll raise it in three days. Temporary. That was just a temporary dwelling. Tent. And that's why it said, and the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us, dwelled among us. That's what the Greek word is, tent. So here you got a tabernacle. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? We have it so far. So here's there's that tabernacle. And that's why the, the feast of booths, the feast of tabernacles, what's it talking about? Now notice, here's the tabernacle in the wilderness. And the Shekinah glory is right here. He's in the midst where two or three gather together. He's in the midst, right? And so all the, here you had all of them encamped around it. That's Revelation chapter 5. It's all gathered around the throne. And we're saying, worthy is the Lamb. <laughs> Amen. And he's in the midst. Then read Revelation 22. And God is light. And he's in the midst. He tabernacled among men. Revelation 22. He is the tabernacle. Isn't he? And we're all gathered around him. And we're praising him. Amen. That's that one. Amen. What did you think about that? That tabernacle, heavenly one. It's amazing. You read about that in Ezekiel. Amen. In Ezekiel. Now, here you got the temporary tabernacle in the wilderness, and then you got the temple, Solomon's temple. It went into captivity, then you had a remnant come out. Started off with Ezra, then Nehemiah, of course you got Esther. But Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple. But Ezra is the one who re restored back the reading of the word and worship. Then once they got the temple up, then they had to build the, wa the wall around it. And I'll share this with you in, in closing. I was in a meeting here probably about not quite a year ago. Two of them. One of them. The first one, I right off from the bat, I said, I started, bless the Lord all my soul, and that was going through the, the scriptures, uh, Psalm 103. It's going through my heart, you know. And I pointed over to Lynn, I said, look at this. And all of a sudden, they started singing it, singing the song, bless the Lord all my soul. And I mean, heaven come down. And it was Brother Eric Blankenship is who it was, and he preached on Symbolic, and of course, you know, there in Nehemiah, how they tried to discourage them from rebuilding the walls. The title of the message is Don't Come Down from the Wall. Okay, because they had a trial in one hand, right, and they had a sword in another. You got to keep building, but you got to fight it at the same time. Okay? Two weeks later, I go to another church and sitting there, and, and that preacher went right, stepped right on the front row, I mean, Lynn, and he gets right in my face, literally. Now, at that point, he calls you by name. Don't listen to what other people are saying about you, Randy. You know, even when me and Lynn, you know, we, we get arguments. I don't listen to her. 
I'm not going to argue. <laughs> no, um, you know, the, and what I mean by that, of course, and so you'll understand, is that sometimes you can get angry and you'll say things you don't really mean. I ain't going to listen to it. I'm going to cast it down. I just ain't going to listen to it. Anything negative, any bad seed, I'm going to cast it down. And I'm going to keep on serving and keep on going. Don't come down from the wall. Keep that trial in your hand. You keep that sword in your hand and don't listen to anything anybody's telling you. It took two weeks and God literally called me by name through that preacher. Randy. I mean, he was that far from me. Loud and clear. <clears throat> Amen. I had another preacher tell me that years back. I ended up in a bad way. And he said, Randy, don't quit preaching. Keep on keeping on. And there have been times that I hugged up with that word. I didn't think I was going to make it through the night at all. God's good. Grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctify. And as you begin to throw off that old man, and it's not you, by the way, it said through the Spirit you do mortify the deeds of the flesh. Amen. I can't put off the old man. Never could. And Israel is our example. First Corinthians chapter 10. And of course, I murmured and complained from time to time and had to repent. Lord God, sorry, Lord, why did I complain? Why? Like I was... So, grow in grace. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I acted like a child, I'm sure. But after I grow in grace, and when I become a man, I put away childish things. He don't intend for us to stay as babies. That's right. We desire the sincere milk of the word. And if we don't sit and read it, and that's I, would he find faith on the earth when he comes back? Luke, you know, chapter 18, 1 through 8, would he find faith? Well, where, where does your faith come from? It's not even your faith. Where did it come from? Faith cometh by here and, and here by the word of God. That's where your faith come from. Understanding what God is saying about it. And that's where your faith is coming from. It's not even your faith. you got one thing you have to do. That's it. Believe. Amen. Amen. Then once you believe, trust and obey for there's no other way. Amen. And you're, you'll be happy in Jesus. I can get into uh, on the soul again. I could get into a uh, good, good chapter to read about that would be uh, Philippians chapter 4. You know, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, think on these things. And what you've seen in me, what you've heard and learned, seen in me, do, be a doer. And the God of peace will, you know, will be with you. You have peace with God. You know, once you accepted Christ, now you're going to have the peace of God. Trust and obey. Be obedient. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for my church family. Thank you, Lord God, for saving me. And Lord, again, all these prayer requests, our petitions, our requests have been brought to the throne of grace and laid at your blessed feet. And Lord God, may your will, we pray, will be done. We thank you what you have done, are doing, and what you're going to do. Add to the, your church. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, just as you did the early church in the book of Acts. In Jesus' name. Amen.